Kitco News special coverage of the Future Blockchain Summit is brought to you by Cook Finance, a revolution in DeFi asset management. I'm speaking now with Sally Ann de la Casa. She is the chief identity hacker at Clique. Welcome to the show, Kitco. Thank you for having me. Sally Ann, you're a fellow Canadian. I'm very excited to talk about your startup, your initiative, and what blockchain is doing for your company. Tell us about the applications of blockchain for, for your firm. Sure, so first I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing yeah. and how the implications um, yeah. with blockchain. So we're building the largest data set of human skills application in tricky work situations. What does that mean? Um, so just think about every day, you're upset with your manager, what do you do? Do you learn how to handle that situation by doing a course? Or maybe you might use a combination of your human skills, judgment and decision making, some empathy. So when I talk about that, that data set of what humans will do and what in the future will be automated, um, we're building really one of the most important data sets in the whole future of workspace. So that data set today, where do we house that? This is where blockchain will come in because there is no certificate for me to give you to say um, you know how to handle that situation. You have the right levels of these particular skills. Um, and that is an interoperable skill, meaning if you will grow and shift and change with it. So blockchain is a great place, just like how it's a home for crypto, because there's no other validation, you know, in terms of crypto. In ter so. This is a great space for the validation. Okay, so uh, give us an example of that data set. So once you've gathered the data, how is it being stored in the blockchain and how is it being analyzed and used? Sure, um, so we create these um, uh, caselets of everyday situations, five to 10 minutes, and there is a deep link attached to that where I can see how you handle the situation. So you go in and you type in how you're gonna handle that particular situation somebody else, you, I get to see how you handle it compared to others from industries and sectors. That link and that piece of information then becomes part of your interoperable, let's say, um, uh, 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 information that you're sharing about yourself. So it will constantly be dynamic and updated um, and something that people can tap into. You mentioned that it's gonna be automated, that process in the future, that's the direction you're taking it. What does that mean exactly? So right now, if I were to find out something about your skills, yeah. where do I get that information right now? Good question. You would probably ask my manager or you could talk to my colleagues in person. Is that scalable? Well, if you make a lot of phone calls a day, I suppose you could, but no. Okay, interesting. So, so automated means if I constantly keep dropping you and others into these situations. Five, 10 minutes a day, you're getting this constantly, whether it's on WhatsApp or your flow of work. I'm, you know, I'm allowing you to build a data set about how you think yeah. and how you apply in a dynamic way, very short. So it's not a long two hour course, five minutes every couple of months, you're just kind of showing your quality of thought of applying your skills in these situations. And I also not, I, I do not show you in isolation I show how you handled it and then compare it to five others, maybe from the same industry, different sectors. So people really get a 360 of you. So I don't need to call your boss yeah. and I don't need to call a reference. I said, wait a minute, look how he looks compared to the CEO of Microsoft. I need to talk to him. And all of that information is what will sit on blockchain. Okay. And are you integrating machine learning into this process as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. So right now it's a quantitative, qualitative and 360 feedback loop process. So we're learning how you think, so we actually can tell after a couple of these whether it's you answering or not, because that's yeah. going to be the next thing. How do you verify right. that information? Right. And um, we are constantly looking. So the you know the quantitative part is simple enough. How often are you doing it? You know, are you doing a robust you know response to that situation? The qualitative a li little more in depth. We know what a, a technical correct answer is. How close are you to that? And the 360 feedback is not calling someone else, but having others who answer the same situation, looking and seeing how you answer in context of them. Um, so the machine learning is constantly, it's gonna be calibrating. Eventually, we will calibrate by parts of the world that you are, because you, 
you know, communication in India might look very different in the U.S. Or critical thinking in Russia might look very different than the UAE. Um, so it's going to, with time, as everyone, you know, is constantly, um, uh, you know, our data lake is constantly having all of these data sets fed into it, we will be able to start differentiating what those skills look like in different parts of the world, different industries, different people. Okay, uh, I understand. Yeah. So Sally, I, I, I know how this helps the, uh, the uh, management side or the HR side, but how does that help the, uh, the other side? So let's say I want my job skills improved over time. How do I use this data set to help me advance my career? Absolutely. So how do you right now, if you were going to for a job at, I don't know, at uh, one of the biggest companies in the world, I don't know, Google, Facebook, and you have incredible judgment and decision making under high pressure leadership situations, how do you show that to Facebook in your interview? qualitative uh, trait that you've just mentioned. I mean, I'd have to demonstrate that with action, wouldn't I? Yeah. And how do you demonstrate that right now if you were going into an interview? How do I see that? difficult doing it in an interview you'd have to have several rounds you'd have to have you'd have to actually be you know put in the action and actually be observed yeah. now what if I said uh, I gave you uh, the power to say here is a deep link and you can monitor how I've been handling these types of situations for the last 30 days and not only in isolation but compared to others but how is that different from a resume um, a resume is static it's a one and done. It says, I am good in leadership and communication. This is different because I put you in an actual situation and you have to respond with your quality of thought of how you would handle that situation. And I get to see how you handle it compared to others. Very different. One is dynamic, one is static. One is situational, one is not. I understand. I think I understand. And let's think it back into blockchain. Why did you choose the blockchain technology to store this data set? Are traditional uh, data management tools not sufficient to handle this type of data? So right now, if I is there any live link? You know, I'll just ask you the question. Is there a live link right now where I can go look at your quality of thought over a period of time of anything? That, that updates live? Yeah. I think it would depend on the end user having to update that information himself, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Or you, maybe the closest thing you might say is, I can go look at your Twitter feed and see how you think about things, but you know that's very open-ended, right? But if I wanted to see in a very closed frame you how you think for a particular job role, you want to be um, a cyber analyst, cyber crime analyst, and I'm really looking at your level of creative and creative and critical thinking. What if I had a data set of situations involving that role? And over a period of time, I can see how you handle situations in that role compared to others. That's why, you know, that's actually what it is we're doing. So that right now doesn't exist. If you go on a job portal, you can't have, you don't have that information. It's very static. My resume, this is where I got a degree from. This is where it's static. And blockchain is more dynamic in Absolutely. a way it handles the data. Okay. Absolutely. It's verifiable. It's... You know, it's, uh, this technology already exists in advertising, does it not? When you have uh, machine learning and AI analyzing consumer trends and predicting what you're about to buy. Is that similar in concept? So eventually, when the data sets get large enough, yeah. um, certainly, and if we open up, you know, uh, uh, clearly when all of that data set is open up, you can start doing predictive you know, analytics on it. Right now, I mean, who, who's building that data set? So think about traditional learning platforms right now, LinkedIn, Udemy, yeah. are any of those showing the quality of thought of the users as they're learning? Or are you just doing multiple choice and watching videos? Well, they might have the data on the back end, but it's not being shown, I guess, on the front end, right? But have you ever taken a course where you are given a bunch of situations um, and you consistently have to keep responding on how you would handle those situations. Right, yeah, it would be it would be just multiple choice. You're right, mostly. Does that tell me a multiple choice? The depth of your quality of thought? Or that you're really good if you were given the options to spot the right option? Okay, so you'd have to input more dynamically with longer form answers and perhaps behavior observations 
That'll be very interesting. See, I'm quizzing you right now. Yeah, no, this is great. This is great. You're testing my knowledge, which uh, which is very limited in this space. You're doing very as well, well okay. because you're answering. You know, I, I, often it's yeah. you know, is there something there, and where is this data going to be used for your tool? By the way, <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, pull David Lin's performance in this interview and use that for your database. Uh, novelty seeking, curious, yeah, yeah exactly. uh, right, thinking yeah. on his feet. Well, can you actually? That's a good point. I mean, what kind of mediums can this use in terms of data collection? Is it just text? Can it scan video, audio? Can it yeah. scan? Yeah, so eventually yeah. I will be able to. So, you know, I, I, I've already kind of A-B tested uh, audio. The problem is audio to text because our algorithms are text-based. Right. So audio to text right now, the technology, even the best, is still yeah. weak. Um, you know, you just need to have one foreign accent in there and it throws everything off. Right. Um, so eventually I think we will get there. Yeah. Um, but as of right now, yeah. primarily all the means we're using, we're translating into text yeah. to be able to have a real accurate read. End users might be worried about privacy. Are you thinking of sharing this with third party assets? So users control their information. Everything is interoperable, meaning you, I mean, we're a big believer in users' rights, right? So all of our users, whether it's through our big corporates or you know regular B2C users, they own their information. Um, most users we have found, we have now given them the tool for the first time to really stand out against yeah. someone else. Right. So they are actually taking the deep links sure. and they're appending it to their LinkedIn profile. So if you go right now on LinkedIn and you put in Gleek, you'll see we have thousands of employees. We can't afford yet, thousands, we're a startup. Yeah. Thousands of employees. What has started happening, and this is where you're looking at user behavior, they, they started appending it so that employers can actually click on the link and go in and see how they think yeah. compared to others. What other applications do you see coming out of this technology in the future? Um, some really significant ones. Um, so the entire future of workspace is coming down to what is going to be automated and what is a human going to be able to do. So this data set of what are the situations of the things that humans will be able to do and why and why, and even if you, why could it not be automated? Or if we wanted to automate this, what is it that we have to impersonate of humans? Yeah. This is the data set that we're the, 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 the biggest key takeaway that I got personally from this conversation is that this technology is very much scalable. And because of the scalability, you could potentially see entire nation states use this for intelligence gathering, could you not? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. We've seen it. LMS systems coming to us to map, you know, the entire HRMS system, their learning systems to these little uh, microsystems. So there's a lot of, as I said, it's a unique part of, you know, unique data set. So maybe you and I don't even know yet yeah. what the use cases are yeah. of this, um, but I'm pretty excited about what we're doing. Before I let you go, Sally Ann, what is your personal background? How did you become chief identity hacker? What does that even mean? <laughs> like, what, do you, what exactly do you hack? So what am I doing? Right? Think about what I'm doing at Gleek. I'm hacking the mask of identity, yeah. right? So all of us put out in the world this resume yeah. that says this is who we are. And if I were to really ask you, you know, what is that representative of in your everyday interactions and situations? It's such a tiny part. And there is no tool, you know, that, you know, I mean, there are personality tests, but we're not one and done. Yeah. We are this beautiful series of imperfect perfect human nuances yeah, yeah, yeah. and the hacking which is what gleek is doing is to be able to kind of dig in to all of those yes. tiny kind of surface level masks that we put out there um, and say no this is truly who i am in these types of situations so that's the hacker it's a good kind of hacker yeah it's interesting yeah well yeah okay well you could be hacking many different things with this technology but you're the benevolent hacker thank you so much for coming on the show <laughs> thank you thank you and thank you for watching Kitco News special coverage of the Future Blockchain Summit is brought to you by Cook Finance, a revolution in DeFi asset management.